In this video, we'll show you how to model the retro NES cartridges that we used in the Astro Galaxy Game Room project and course. We'll start by using Blender's default general scene, and we want to be sure that we start in our modeling mode. And let's first set our viewport to quad view. This way, we can see the top, front, and side of our model simultaneously. We'll begin by importing a reference image into our scene. Something to note, using the hotkey Shift A will quickly allow you to access Blender's Add menu. With our reference image in our scene, we'll move it out of our modeling working area and also add it to its own collection group. This way, we can quickly hide and unhide our reference image without having to hunt for it within our main collection group. We'll begin by scaling our cube so that its size fits the body of our cartridge. Next, we'll grab the bottom face of our cube and extrude it down to create the bottom portion of our cartridge. Next, we'll extrude the left and then the right face of our cube to create the extended body of our cartridge. We'll then grab all of our top faces and move them down so that they're just below the indented area along the tread-like area of the cartridge. Let's next make a vertical edge loop that falls just outside of the center of our model. Let's now grab the bottom faces of our model. Using the Insert Edge tool in our Scale tool, let's create the bottom opening of our cartridge. With our bottom shape defined, let's now extrude the faces upwards towards the y-axis. Using our insert edge loop tool, let's insert two vertical edges that will align with the left and right section of the vertical tread-like pattern on the cartridge. With that complete, let's now select all of our top faces, but we'll deselect the front face that we just defined in an edge loop and let's now extrude those faces until they reach the top of the cartridge. Let's now insert two more vertical edge loops and we'll use them to define the indented area along the top corners of our cartridge. So let's also grab our vertexes and line them up with the indentations on the top sides of our cartridge. Next, we'll select the faces at the top of our mesh then unselect the faces that form the grooves at the top of our game cartridge. We'll then extrude our faces upwards. We then want to select all the front faces of our cartridge mesh. With our faces selected, we want to unselect the faces that form the area that encapsulates the tread-like grooves in our cartridge. We want to then extrude our faces forward and scale them in slightly on their X, Y, and Z axis. We want to next select all of the faces on the back of our cartridge and do the same process of extruding them and scaling them slightly inward. At this point, we can now see that we've created the basic shape of our cartridge. Let's now create a vertical edge loop, placing it right below the label of our cartridge. And let's now select the faces that will form the label area of our cartridge. And we want to be sure we don't select any of the faces on the back of our cartridge, so only the faces on the top and front of our cartridge should be selected. With our faces selected, let's now use the Insert Faces tool to extrude our faces inward. After adjusting our typology, let's select the new faces we've created and use our Insert Edge tool 
to once again extrude our faces inward. With that complete, let's now select the front corner edges of our label area and use a bevel operation and add an extra segment to give the edges of our front label corners a more rounded appearance. Let's next select the two new vertexes created by our bevel on the front part of our cartridge and use a connect vertex path operation to create an edge connecting our two vertexes. Let's then use an edge loop to create an edge that we can then use to connect our newly created vertexes to the rest of our typology in our cartridge mesh. With that complete, let's use our polygon knife tool to connect the typology of the vertexes we just created to those created by our bevel. Let's next create the tread-like pattern on our cartridge. And while we could easily create this with the texture, since we can create this pattern with very few polygons, and our cartridge will be one of the focal points of our exercise, we'll instead use 3D geometry to create this effect. With that said, let's go to our add menu and add a polygon mesh cube into our scene. We'll reduce the scale of our cube then align it to one of our tread light shapes that we can see on our cartridge from our reference image. Let's also delete the back and side faces of our cube due to the fact these faces will be aligned to those of our cartridge mesh. With our shape created and aligned, let's create a collection layer for our new polygon object. With our object in its new layer, let's now begin duplicating our shape and aligning them with those seen on our reference image. Let's next create the bottom shape found within the front groove of our cartridge. To do this, we'll once again begin by adding a polygon cube. We'll next scale and size it to match the body of our shape. Let's now select this top face and extrude it upward. And let's select our two top corner edges and create a bevel, adding four segments to round out its shape. Let's then select our polygon knife tool to connect or cut new vertexes to clean up our new object's typology. With that complete, let's now select its back vertexes and scale them slightly larger, which will give the illusion of our shape having more depth. Lastly, let's align the bottom vertexes of our cartridge and our new shape. And let's duplicate our tread mesh, placing it in the indented area of our cartridge. With the main body of our cartridge complete, let's create another polygon cube 
and we'll use this to create the chip inside of our cartridge. We'll extrude the front and back faces of our chip and use these extrusions to round out its shape. Lastly, we'll create another edge loop. And use the insert faces operation to create the indentation for the back factory label of our cartridge. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.